Monday. How's it going? I'm excited to introduce you to our new piece of furniture that we're going to be working on. And it was one of those situations to where when we were leaving the thrift store, we had already made our purchases, we had already loaded up the truck, and somebody came and dropped this little gem out in front of the overhead for them to take it in. And so Gene, as you can imagine, was really thrilled that I was pulling him back in there to be able to get some furniture. And I had to go back the next day. But um, I was talking to Gene about it and we were trying to date it, that we think it's probably early 40s. Um, his father, and a lot of you may not know this, but Gene's dad um, and his grandfather both had furniture stores. And a lot of the pieces that he was seeing being sold back um, of course, Gene was not born in the 40s, but a lot of those pieces that he has seen and been aware of over all these years. But this is a piece that's been done with a Carpathian elm burl wood. Carpathian elm burl wood. And so it's a veneer that's been placed over a substructure of wood. Now, a lot of people, I know there are paint haters out there that you're going to watch this, so I want to explain what I'm doing and why. Because I'm not going to touch the burl itself, but what I am going to do is on some of the, the, the front facing, I will, I'm going to add a little bit of black or ebony um, one-step paint. And because here's the reason why. I think it's going to make the burl drawers show up that much prettier. The other thing I'm gonna take you through is there are some of the areas you can see on the tops of this where it's been scored. And that was how they actually applied the, um, the overlay of the, the veneer. And so there are places where it's starting to lift. And I'm gonna take you through and I'm gonna show you what we need to do to put some wood glue in a syringe and actually go underneath the surface to be able to get that to attach and clamp it. The second thing that I'm gonna do after the repair is I'm gonna go in, and I don't know if you can tell, but look here and here, and then on the edges. On the sides of this piece, as well as the feet, they're not in good shape at all. And the wood is not great wood, it's a veneer and even the insides of this have been faux, so they're just paint already. So I'm gonna take that to um, a black one step because I think that's gonna make the burl show up that much more and it's gonna be that much prettier. So I'm gonna leave the tops in place. I'm gonna paint the parts, the fronts, the sides, and the inside in black one step. Then I'm gonna use my tonic, which is a fabulous product if you have not used it before, it's a hemp-based oil that we use as a furniture tonic that is gonna bring this really um, kind of dingy Carpathian elm back to life. And then I'm gonna gild the hardware in gold. So that way, the black, the darker Carpathian elm, a waxed finish, and, and then top it off with just kind of a distressed setback gold handle. It's gonna be so pretty. But as all projects, what do we do first? We need to clean it. And a lot of you may say, well, Amy, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of wax on there. It's really distressed and kind of um, dried out anyway. Over the years of any product, when you think about something like this that's 80 years old, there's gonna be Windex. I mean, um, there's gonna be liquid gold. There's going to be pledge. There's gonna be all these waxes that if you use Simple Green or if you use an oily cleanser, it acts as a surfactant to where the paint will not adhere well. So this is actually a refinisher's grade cleaner that allows us to be able to take all of those oils, pledge, waxes, even a carnauba wax off of the piece and get it down to a clean finish. And so that way I'm gonna go in and get started. I'm gonna start painting the black. I'm gonna repair my, uh, my wood and then I'm gonna come back clean everything with my clean slate first, and I'm gonna be gilding the hardware, and I'm gonna take you on this journey. One thing I wanted to tell you, a lot of people may say, Amy, I don't know why you would use the one step sometimes, and why do you use the Miracle Paint another? The Miracle Paint is a water-based enamel. So if you need a really hardy finish, um, it's great. It's great on trim, it's great on walls, if you wanna be able to have paneling, it's great on iron furniture outside. 
But on this particular instance, I want more of a waxy, very satiny looking finish. So in that case, the one step chalk base paint is gonna be perfect because I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put the wax on top of it, put a little bit of dust of ages and then burnish it to where it's got a really pretty patina that is gonna be complementary with the burl finish with the tonic on. So I wanted to tell you that in the beginning, that's my thought process when I go through and I'm actually gonna be restoring a piece of furniture. And I'm excited now that we're doing these tutorials to take you through the whole process because you actually see it being done all along the way. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. We're excited and thank you. I have not commented yet on your comments, but thank y'all. I know, it's like you never know. You're in the process, you fall in love with something and then you have a vision for it. And then when you start executing it, you don't really know until you get to the very end. And um, one of the things that you know I've been talking about is the fact that should I do a good man, it's hard to find, or the black. And I really think because of the ochre color in uh, the Carpathian Elm Burl, that it's gonna be better to go with black. And as I shared before on my earlier video, I'm gonna be using the, um, the black one step because I wanna be able to have more of a waxed finish. So we've clean slated everything and we've taped off and I wanted to kind of go over with you my thought process again on this piece. So the legs, um, they, they've done some faux wood braining on them. They don't go with anything, so I'm gonna go in and paint them. And so what I've done, we've taped off, you'll see the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna let this burl here and here act as a visual framework at the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna paint this here because this they've done some faux wood grain painting that didn't do that great of a job. So I'm gonna go on and be painting over that. And in order to be able to kind of encapsulate my drawers, which I do love my drawers, I'm gonna paint this area black here. So that way I've got framework here, I've got a black leg, I'm gonna keep all of this burl top, back and front, burl, wood, and I'm gonna paint the others. So, um, the other thing is that I want, want to be able to point out with you, when you're taping, you wanna make sure that you get your tape. I use this blue 3M tape, that way it doesn't pull the varnish or the finish. Um, off and it's really good when you're working with lacquers and different things and I'll come back with the handle of my brush and I'll burnish it Because your paint job is only as good as your tape job Whether you're painting walls whether you're painting cabinets or whether you're painting furniture You've got to have a good tape job. The other thing is you want to make sure if you can to try to have as long um, a long pieces of tape as possible. Don't do a lot of different little pieces because then that way it can funnel and go down inside it. So I've got my black one step and it is a pure black. Again, this is a water-based calcium carbonate paint. I'm gonna load up my synthetic brush and then I'm gonna start coming in. The nice thing about it with this black on this dark color, I'm gonna get good coverage. So I do like to have two thinner coats. I always think two coats just do better than one. I could probably get by with one, but I'm just gonna go on and do two. So when I'm not on the live, I'm gonna go in and come around and get the back of my legs. But I want you to just kind of be able to see what it's gonna to start to look like. <coughs> Look how I'm going up and down. Even though I'm painting something, again, as if you were watching, go back and listen to my first video because I'm gonna be part of a purist here and I'm gonna protect my, my um, burl, but I'm creating a darker framework of this black to be able to give it some interest and then cover up the part that's really not that great looking, but they did some faux graining. Always make sure that you go in and do your, 
you're cleaning really good with your clean slate, it'll get all that wax and things off. So I wanted you to just kind of start to see what this is gonna begin to look like. I'm gonna go across just a little bit. Now, something that I do plan on doing, I'm gonna show you. This was, this was something that was interesting. I'm gonna leave my drawers like this, but look at this. This, when you add these quarter round in here inside of a piece of furniture, this is a telltale sign that it was done by a craftsman. And can you see this here? I do have dovetail. Guess what? This is mahogany. So I'm going to put some wood tonic not only on the sides of my drawers and the fronts of my drawers. This is my, um, my, my burl. But I'm going to do a really sweet design that is kind of more that goes along in the 40s or the 50s. I'm gonna use one of my mesh stencils. I'm gonna do a design here, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the tonic on it. So that's the fun thing. And the fact, as you start to work with it, now look, I don't wanna put this in there, but can you see my drawer? Can you see how pretty that's gonna be with the black? Now, now do you see? Now this becomes a framework for it. It's gonna make the burl show up that much better. And then a lot of times I'll come up with ideas of things that I want to be able to do along the way. I like adding the detail to the sides. We're going to gild the hardware. So it's really going to turn out to be a really, really sweet piece. Follow along with me as we work on this. Oh, here's the other deal. Share this video. Tag three friends. And your name will go in for a drawing. I'm going to be giving away a, a quart of the one-step paint, which on this whole piece, I probably will use about a half of a can. That way it, it, you're like, oh my gosh because this will cover about 138 square feet. I'm also gonna send you a bottle of clean slate and I'm gonna send you a brush. So all you have to do is share this video, tag some friends, and your name will go on for a drawing and we're gonna be giving this away. All right, stay tuned. Y'all ready? I don't know when I'm working on this, the whole time I'm thinking about what I get to show you. And then even T and I, we were talking, going over in the studio like, what are the elements of the takeaways that I want you to have as I'm doing these pieces of furniture that I want you to learn? So, I'm getting kind of jazzed. We actually just named him. His name is Winston. That was Jean's idea. So, we've named our vanity. His name is Winston. And, and here's the other exciting thing. As I'm working on it, I'm starting to see the room come together that it would go in. Does that make sense? Because all of that is predicated on the color choice and it was actually started with the burl. The burl pattern and that color predicated what color we needed to actually paint the body of it. And then that started to design the hardware and that started to design the art. So, one of the things that I love doing, oh, let me just say this, as you pop on here, we're live. If you've never tuned in before, my name is Amy Howard. I'm the mother maker at Amy Howard at Home and the creator um, fortunately, in the products and things that you see and that you use, this has been a lifelong journey, longer than I, I really actually want to admit as far as how long I've been doing this. But um, I love rescuing and restoring furniture, and I love the fact that we can decorate our homes on the cheap. And there's no other time that you can brag on how much you spend on something that when you have somebody come into your house and you go, Look at this, isn't it fab? I got it for $10. So as you pop on here, say, hey, you're part of our tribe. You're part of people that get it. You get me, you get what we do and you get what we love. And you get the fact that we're trying to save the landfills with American made furniture that we wanna rescue, restore and redecorate with. So um, one of the things I wanna show you, there's three things that I'm gonna show you today. And as you pop on here, say, hey, tell me where you're tuning in from, share this video and tag three friends, and your name is gonna go in for a drawing, I'm gonna be giving away the products that I'm working with today. So, all the products that I'm working with today, I'm gonna to put in a bundle, and I'm gonna send it to you absolutely free to the winner. So all you have to do is um, uh, share the video, tag three friends, and then um, your name will go in for a drawing, and on Thursday, we will do the drawing, and you'll see it, you'll see the name listed, who the winner was. 
and then they'll send it to you absolutely free. So, but more than that, hop on here when you when when you see me when you jump on here, just say hey, tell me where you're tuning in from. And these, I see so many old friends. Y'all become my friends over all these years. I'm um, of doing this. All right, so enough talk. I mean, I'm gonna be quiet, and now I'm gonna show you. So here's one of the drawers on um, on Winston. And I wanna show you something that can be really, really cool to put as an element on the drawers, especially if you're a flipper. If you like redoing furniture, we need to be looking at all the different things that we can add as elements that make it more saleable, sellable. That somebody would go, oh my gosh, this could be the thing that pushes them over the edge that says, I have to have this. But here's something else. It adds value for us. If it's going in our home, it's something that we're even more proud of when somebody comes in the room and looks at it. What do we do? We pull the drawer out and it's like, it's magic. So, I want to show you something. It's so easy and so fun. I'm not painting over um, the mahogany that the drawer is made out of. We talked about it yesterday. It's dovetailed. It's got these beautiful finishing aspects to it. It's all solid mahogany, which is a beautiful hardwood, which means that it will not... Um, Warp, that's why they would always make drawers out of hardwoods. You would never see drawers out of pine on really fine manufactured furniture. All right, so I'm gonna be using a stencil. We've already gone on and put this on um, the Amy Howard at Home site today. This is called a peony pattern. If you've never worked with my stencils before, um, they are adhesive, they're mesh. They aren't like anything that you would use on a Cricut because you get an incredible amount of detail. Look at this. All of this detail is so great. And to me, I like working with products like this um, when I'm doing drawers in lieu of transfers because um, it's actual paint and I think it makes a major difference in it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay down, I'm actually gonna take the design all the way to the edge, as you can see, of my drawer. And the stencil is adhesive, it's reusable. You can reuse it about 15 times. Um, as you're going to be using it and washing it, you can clean it with um, just with water. There's no, there's no need to use soap. But then that way you see it will hold, the adhesion will hold it in place. I'm going to be working with my, um, my ink from um, a maker studio. You can also get this on the Amy Howard at Home site. And the name of it is Can't Never Could. It's just black ink. I'm going to be working with a spreader because when I am using ink, you can use ink on wood. Um, I'm actually going to come back later and I'm going to use wax on top of it. So I'm just applying just a band of the ink on my spreader like this. And so I'm going to turn my drawer around a little bit. And then at a 45 degree angle, I'm pushing, I'm pushing the ink through my stencil. Guys, as you pop on here, please say hey. Tell me where you're tuning in from. And as I shared, share this video, tag some friends, and your name is gonna go into a bundle that we're gonna be giving away all the products, including this stencil that I'm using today. So it's gonna make a lot of fun. All right, so I'm gonna spread this out like this. And all of these patterns with the stencils are where you can um, marry them up to where it will be one continuous pattern. Now look at this. I'm coming back. I am pushing this ink through this. I'm pressing it to where there's quite a bit of pressure. So that way when I pull it up like this, look at this. I've got this gorgeous pattern. Now, is that not fun? Now, here's the deal. What I need to do, um, if I were not doing a Facebook Live, I would go on and I would take the stencil um, to my Tupperware container or to the sink and just rinse it out and lay it up, adhesive side up, and allow it to air dry. Keep it away from paper towels, keep it away from rags or anything, um, because I don't want the fibrous materials from the rags or the paper towels to get into my adhesion on the back of the stencil. But I can use it again and put it back in the package. But I wanted you to see, I'm gonna allow this to dry down. Don't you love this on top of the mahogany? Is this not the most fun? Now, come over here and I wanna show you. Here's a drawer that I did earlier. Look at this. Look how this plays off of the black cabinet. Do you not love that? Ah, I got so excited. I wanted to be able to show you. Look at that. And here's the other thing. I did, and you can do this afterwards. A lot of people don't realize it. You can 
take a little bit of our light antique wax and go over it once you have applied your design on the side of your drawer. Allow it to come to tack and that's, you can buff it and that's gonna make your drawer glide that much easier. You can also go in and do the styles. You can take the drawer out when you're painting it. A lot of times your drawers may stick just a little bit. Just add a little bit of the light antique wax and that way it's gonna be beautiful going in and out. And the wood loves it. This wood probably hasn't had any of this food on it in a long, long time. So I can very well uh, use the light antique wax. I can use the Mindro beeswax and I can also use furniture tonic. Any of those products are gonna be great for the wood and it's gonna have a tendency to seal the ink that you put on your wood. So put in the comments below, do you like this? Does this make you happy? It makes me happy. Okay, now, come I wanna show you something else. So something else that we're gonna do, let's, let's look at this over here. So if we're looking at the burl and we're looking at the black, one thing that you're gonna notice, let me grab my water. One thing you're gonna notice is the fact that it looks a little raw and we don't want it to look raw. I want it to feel like a furniture finish. So come over here, I want you to see this. I apologize for my, my dirty paper. Do you see the difference? Let's look at this again. Look at this black. See how, how kind of flat it is. Now come over here. Do you see the difference? This has just a gorgeous finish to it. It's got a sheen. I've added some of the dust of ages that's gotten down in the crevices and now it's got some depth. So I wanna show you how to be able to do that. So let's come down here. I'm gonna take my light antique wax always offload when I've got it. And when I'm working with my wax, I always use a natural bristle brush. I don't use a synthetic brush. And I'm gonna go on and apply the wax. When I've got some crevices like this, I'll just go in and just kind of pounce it and then feather it back out. And then go over the whole leg. Now, what this does is this will act as a, um, an ability for you, once this comes to tack, you're gonna be able to add your dust of ages. Now, I did this leg, come on over here. I did this leg just a few minutes before we went live and it's dried down because when you apply this, you, when you're if you touch it with your fingers, it's greasy. And we never wanna apply dust of ages on this when it's wet and greasy. We want it to come to what we call tack, T-A-C-K. So now I'm gonna come back with another chip brush. You always wanna make sure your chip brush is uh, dry that you're applying your dust of ages with. You don't want it to be moist with wax. And then I'm gonna come on top of this. This is what's gonna give me more of a furniture factory looking finish. And then I'm gonna go over all the other black on this piece, which actually you're gonna be surprised at how this folds in really pretty with the burl. Now, see this, um, see this coming into the air? I would really suggest, I can't do it while I'm doing a live, but I would like for you to wear a dust mask or work in an open area with this, just where I, I don't want you inhaling this. So now I'm gonna come back with a lint-free rag. And the um, T was asking me before we went live, what does this do? I said, it's actually a polishing agent. And so I'm going to come across it like this. It's gonna get down into the black. And it's gonna set it back. Look at this. Do you see this up here? Look at this. See how it's almost raw looking? Well, now, I'm not gonna leave all that on there. I'll come back and I'll start to burnish it a little bit. I wanna leave some of that dust down in the crevices, but it's actually getting down into the wax and becoming part of the finish. So it feels, when I, when I come back and I buff it, it has a feeling like this. It sets it back, it's much richer. And let's look, can you see the difference between this and even the side of the cabinet where it's that black. See how it sets it back and it makes it more complimentary with the burl. It's gonna be so pretty when we're finished because that way I'll be able to get a hand waxed finish on my burl 
transition that now down into my black that's got that pretty um, gray that just ages down in the crevices. And here's something else I want you to see. Last thing. Look at the two pieces of hardware. A lot of people don't realize this, but our one-step paint allows you to paint metal. When I looked at this hardware, when I was playing with the black, when I was coming back and adding my dust, when I was adding the element on the side, and I thought, you know what? I'm not crazy about this. This isn't a solid brass piece of hardware anyway. So I'm not hurting anything. I'm not degradizing the, the quality of it. So I thought, you know what would be better is to be able to come back with just a little bit of one step and using an artist brush, I can come on top of it. I'm not concerned about covering the whole thing, but I want, I'm setting it back. I'll let a little bit of it show, but I'm wanting it to set it back enough so where when I come back and I wax this, I am seeing the burl I'm seeing my gorgeous new black finish, and I'm gonna see the hardware, because now I'm gonna be able to wax the hardware, I'm gonna be able to add the dust of ages, so that way that finish is marrying up with the wood on the piece, and it's all gonna fold in really nicely. So I just wanted you to be able to see every single element, I don't wanna do the complete reveal yet, I've got some work to do. Um, of how we can take elements of the piece. We don't have to paint the whole piece. I'm like so many of you, I wanna be able to preserve, and there's really pretty burl wood like this, I wanna see it. But then I wanna be able to add certain elements of it where the piece would have been thrown away. That's why the person donated this. It's because the, the sides, the inside, they didn't look so good. They hadn't watched this video. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if the person sees this video that this was their sweet vanity that we've now, now named Winston. It's got these gorgeous drawers, art on the side, and it's really gonna turn out to be an adorable piece. So stay tuned. I wanted to teach you those three things and be thinking about that, especially the value that adding the dust of ages has and adding it to the black that starts to pull all this gorgeous stained wood together with our painted finish. All right, stay tuned guys. Okay, these are Christmas for me. This is the final reveal we named our vanity. Winston. So as you pop on here, tell us where you're tuning in from. And as always, when we do these live rescue restores of our furniture, we like to give away. So we're going to give away the stencil, the ink, the black one step, the light antique wax, and um, a brush to be able to have you be able to recreate the same look. Oh, and the Dust of Ages that we did on this project. So I'm gonna let T back up just a little bit. I want you to be able to see, look at this. Guys, look. Look at the artwork on these sweet drawers. Is it not precious? It's not that we totally changed this piece in its entirety, we just took it up a level or two. And I love the honesty of our tribe that you say, Amy, I thought it was gonna look tacky because my whole intent was to be able to give new life to this piece and make what wasn't good about it to cover it up. And so being able to paint the inside, we painted the handles with the one step. We painted the base, of course, we did our light wax, our dust of ages, and then of course, I think the cherry on top is all of the artwork that we used, our stencil. All of this is available on Amy Howard at Home. Gel ink, waxed it over. It's absolutely perfect. These drawers glide better than they have in probably 70 years. So, he looks beautiful. He's ready for his home. And some of you ask what we do with the pieces here that we actually rescue and restore. They're gonna go to Be Generous it's an organization that um, helps women that have struggled um, and is showing them a new life out of human trafficking. And um, we love being able to partner with organizations like that to be able to 
Um, as we see, we're rescuing and restoring the furniture to be something beautiful. God's rescuing and restoring them to be something beautiful too. So we wanted to show you, Winston, how beautiful he is. And share this video, tag three friends, your name will go in for a drawing. Let's, sharing is caring. And um, we want to have your name go in for a drawing so that way you can win the, the paint and all the supplies so you can make a beautiful piece too. Have a great day, everybody. Mwah.